some of the debates I have with myself about everything uh, from a technology perspective is how much to hold on to the tools you're comfortable with versus how much to invest in using modern tools. And the signal that the communities provide you with is the noisy one because a lot of people year to year get excited about new tools and you have to make a prediction. Are these tools defining a new generation or something that will transform programming or is this just a fad that will pass? Certainly with JavaScript frameworks and uh, front end and back end of the web, there's a lot of different styles that came and went. <laughs> I remember learning, um, what was it called, ActionScript? I remember for Flash, um, you know, learning how to program in okay. Flash, uh, learning how to design, do graphic animation, all that kind of stuff in Flash. Same with Java applets. I remember creating quite a lot of Java applets, thinking that this potentially defines the future of the web, and it did not. Well, you know, in most cases like that, the particular technology eventually gets replaced, but many of the concepts that the technology introduced or made accessible first are preserved, of course. Because yeah, we're not using Java applets anymore, but the notion of reactive web pages that sort of contain little bits of code that respond directly to something you do like pressing a button or a link or hovering even, mm -hmm. uh, is, has certainly not gone away. And that those animations that were made painfully complicated with Flash, I mean, Flash was an innovation when it first came up. And when it was replaced by JavaScript equivalent stuff, it was a somewhat better way to do animations, but those animations are still there. Not all of them, but, but sort of, again, there is an evolution and often, so often with technology, that the sort of the technology that was eventually thrown away or replaced was still essential to, to sort of get started. There wouldn't be jet planes without propeller planes, I bet you. But from a user perspective, yes. From the feature set, yes. But I, from a programmer perspective, it feels like all the time I've spent with ActionScript, all the time I've spent with Java on the applet side for the GUI development, I, well, no, Java, I have to push back. That, that was useful that because it transfers, but the Flash doesn't transfer. So some things you learn and invest time in. What yeah, what what you learned the sk the skill you picked up learning action script yeah was sort of it, it was perhaps a super valuable skill at the time you picked it up if if you if you learned action script early enough but that skill is no longer in demand. Well, that's the calculation you have to make when you're learning new things. Like today, people start learning programming. Today, I'm trying to to see what are the new languages to try, what are the new uh, systems to try, that what are the new IDEs to try to to keep keep improving. Well, that's keep... that's why we start when we're young, right? When <laughs> when we're but but that seems very true to me. That that when you're young, you have your whole life ahead of you, and you're you're allowed to make mistakes. In fact, you should you should feel encouraged to to do a bit, bit of stupid stuff. Yeah. Try not to get yourself killed or seriously maimed, but try stuff that deviates from from what everybody else is doing. And like nine out of ten times, you'll just learn why everybody else is not doing that. <laughs> or why everybody else is yeah. doing it some other way. And one out, out of 10 times you sort of, you discover something that's better or that, that somehow works. I mean, there are all sorts of crazy things that were invented uh, by accident, by people trying, trying stuff together. That's great advice to try random stuff, make a lot of mistakes. Once you're married with kids, you're probably going to uh, be a little more risk averse because now there's more at stake and you've already hopefully had 
some time where you where you were experimenting with crazy shit. <laughs> I like how marriage and kids solidifies your choice <laughs> of programming language. How does that, uh, the Robert Frost poem with the, the, the road less taken, which I think is misinterpreted by most people. But uh, uh, anyway, I, I, I feel like the choices you make early on, especially if you go all in, they're gonna define the rest of your life's trajectory in a way that, like you basically are picking a camp. So, uh, you know, there's, if you invest a lot in PHP, if you invest a lot in .NET, if you invest a lot in JavaScript, you're going to stick there. You That's that's your life journey. It's very well, hard to Well, only jump. as far as that technology remains relevant. Yes, yes. I mean, if if at age 16, you learn coding in C, and by the time you're 26, C is like a dead language, then there's still time to switch. There's probably some kind of survivor bias or whatever it's called <laughs> yes. in, in sort of your observation that, that you pick a camp because there are many different camps to pick. And if you pick .NET, then, then you can coast for the rest of your life because that technology is now so ubiquitous, of course, that it's, even if it's, if it's bound to die, it's gonna take a very long time. Well, for me personally, I had a very difficult and in my own head, brave leap that I had to take relevant to our discussion, which is most of my life I programmed in C and C++. And so uh, having that hammer, everything looked like a nail. So I would literally even do scripting in C++. Like I would create <laughs> programs that do script-like things. And uh, when I first came to Google, and, and, and before then it became already, before TensorFlow, before all of that, there was a growing realization that C++ is not the right tool for machine learning. We could, we could talk about why that is. It's unclear why that is. A lot of things has to do with community and culture and how it emerges and stuff like that. But for me to decide to take the leap to Python, like all out, basically switch completely from C++ except for uh, highly performant robotics applications. There was still a, there was still a culture of C++ in, in the space of robotics. Mm -hmm. That was a big leap. Like I had to, you know, like like uh, people have like existential crises or midlife crises or whatever. You had to realize almost like walking away from a, from a person you love. Because um, I, I was sure that C++ would have to be a lifelong companion. For a lot of problems I would want to solve, C++ would be there. And it was a question to say, well, that might not be the case. Because C++ is still one of the most popular languages in the world, one of the most used, one of the most dependent on. It's also still evolving quite yes. a bit. Yes. I mean, that that is not a sort of a fossilizing community. Yes. They they are doing great innovative work, actually. A lot. But yet the sort of their innovations are hard to follow if you're not already a hardcore C++ user. Well, this was the thing. It pulls you in. It's a rabbit hole. I was a hardcore. The all meta programming, template programming. Like I, I would start using the modern C as it developed, right? Not just the not not just the shared pointer and the garbage collection that's you, that makes it easier for you to work mm -hmm. with some of the flaws, but the detail, like the meta programming, the the crazy stuff that's that's coming out there. But then you have to just empirically look and step back and say, what language am I more productive in? Sorry to say, what language do I enjoy my life with more? And uh, readability and able to think through and all that kind of stuff. That Those questions are harder to ask when you already have a loved one, which in my case was C++. And then there's Python, uh, like that meme, was, is the, the, the grass is greener on the other side. Am I just infatuated with a new fad, new cool thing? Or is this actually going to make my life better? And I think a lot of people face that kind of decision. It was a difficult decision for me um, it, when I made it. At this time, it's an obvious switch if you're into machine learning. But at that time, it wasn't quite yet so obvious. So it was, it was a risk. And you know, you have the same kind of stuff with, um, I still, because of my connection to WordPress, 
I still do a lot of backend uh, programming in PHP. Hmm. Uh, and the question is, you know, Node.js, Python, do you switch to, do you switch backend to any of those uh, programming? There's the case for Node.js for me. Well, mo more and more and more of the front end, it runs in JavaScript. Um, and fascinating, cool stuff is done as JavaScript. Maybe use the same programming language for the back end as well. Uh, the case for Python for the back end is well, you're doing so much programming outside of the web in Python, so maybe use Python for the back end. And then the case for PHP, well, most of the web still runs in PHP. You have a lot of experience with PHP. Why uh, fix something that's not broken? Those are my own <laughs> personal struggles, but I think they reflect the struggles of a lot of people in, with different programming languages, with different problems they're trying to solve. It's a weird one. And there, there's not a single answer, right? Because yeah. depending on how much time you have to learn new stuff, where you are in your life, what, what you're currently working on, who you want to work with, what communities you like, yeah. there's not one right choice. Maybe if you, if you sort of, if you can look back 20 years, you can say, well, that whole detour through action script was a waste of time. But nobody could know that. So you can't you can beat yourself up over that. Uh, you just need to accept that not every choice you make is going to be perfect. Maybe sort of keep plan B in the back of your mind. Uh, but don't don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. Don't don't try to do, sort of don't don't create a spreadsheet with like <laughs> yeah. where you're trying to estimate. Well, if I learn this language, I expect to make X million dollars in a lifetime, and if I learn that language, I expect to make Y million dollars in a lifetime. And which which is higher, and what which has more risk, and where is the chance that it's like picking picking a stock? Kind of, kind of, but uh, I think with stocks you can do diversifying your investment is good. With productivity in life, boy, that spreadsheet is possible to construct. Like if you actually carefully analyze what your interests in life are, where you think you can maximally impact the world, there really is better and worse choices for a programming language. They're not just about the syntax, but about the community, about where you predict the community is headed, uh, what large systems are programmed in that. But can you create that spreadsheet? Because that's sort of, you're mentioning a whole bunch of inputs that go into that spreadsheet yeah. where you have to estimate things that are very hard to measure and even harder. I mean, they're, they're hard to measure retroactively and they're even harder to predict. Like, what is the better community? Well, better is, is one of those incredibly difficult words. What's better for you is not better for someone else. No, but we're not doing a public speech about what's better, we're doing a personal spiritual journey. I can determine a circle of friends, cir circle one and circle two, and I can have a bunch of parties with one and a bunch of parties with two, and then write down or take a mental note of what made me happier, <laughs> right? And that, you know, you have, if you're a machine learning person, you wanna say, okay, I want to build a large company that does, that is grounded in machine learning, but also has a sexy interface that has a large impact on the world. What languages do I use? You look at what Facebook is using, you look at what Twitter is using. Then you look at performant, more newer languages like Rust, or you look at languages that have taken, that most of the community uses in the machine learning space, that's Python. And you can like think through, you can hang out and think through it. And it's it's always a invest. And the, the level of activity of the community is also really interesting. Like you said, C++ and Python are super active in terms of the development of the language itself. But do you think that you can make objective choices there? No, no. But, no. but there's a gut you build up. Like, don't you, don't you believe in that gut feeling? Oh, everything about is very subjective. And yes, you most certainly can have a gut feeling and your gut can also be wrong. <laughs> That's why there are billions of people because they're not all right. I mean, yeah. 
clearly there are more people living in the Bay Area who have plans to sort of create a Google-sized company mm -hmm. than there's room in the world for Google-sized companies. And they're going to have to duke it out in the market uh, space. And there's many more choices than just the programming language.